Maggie, you told us there was some good money. Candy Vale obviously still favourite, though. Well, Candy Vale threatened to get out to black figures for a moment, but in uh, Candy Vale comes again now. There's been big, big money for Candy Vale late. Danilago, uh, Danilago has come in uh, a good point and a half. Good value on the tote at the $6.80. They're the two only ones in commission. If you're looking for something for your multiples, run and jump. There's been a little money there. A little money for Regal Omaru down the bottom, number 14. But uh, shortest price favourite of the carnival so far, Candy Vale. Peter Merton's big, uh, a big lot of pressure for him. He's an experienced jockey on a good horse here, Simon. And he knows the well, Bruce. He's had a tough spring carnival. Huh? It hasn't had much luck early Caulfield Cup uh, Carnival, Guinea's Day and Cup Day. He knows her very well. He's drawn a beautiful gate in two, and uh, she'll just, he'll just give her the um, best run of all time. He's just got to be careful not to get boxed in between the 700 and the 500. Give her enough room. She'll be too classy for this lot. Bit of a smoky that's drawn barrier one here too. Regal Omaru, if you're having a bet at home, I think it's a bit of a chance. Just been told there may be a lead bag left off the saddle of one of the horses, so we're just not sure. Jockey may have just had... I thought that uh, there's been a problem. Now, I wonder if it is run and jump with Reese McLeod. Not sure, but there is some activity there. Just while we've got a moment, Glenn Boss said something really interesting when he was leaving. He said they'll run a faster time today in the cup than they would if the track was fast. He said because the horses will have confidence to stretch out in the straight. It was a, it was a pretty good thought, I thought. And with the uh, watering and, and the warm weather, Bruce, you've got consistency in your surface, OK? Um, early early uh, spring carnival with, with the rain and the tracks and the... And the Go on, mate. Go on. I was just going to say, this is coming out, I think. I think it's going to be scratch. Yep. Well, just getting back to the uh, track being consistent, um, it'll be perfect conditions today for every runner. Thanks for that, Simon. So, a real disaster here for the connections of run and jump. They'll be bitterly disappointed. Mm. John Maloney, the trainer. Reese McLeod, the jockey. Reese Rowe, the last winner on Saturday here, as we join Greg Miles for his call of the Big Pond. 1700 up. with the news that run and jump is a late scratching number seven. Any reason? Now please note number seven run and jump as a late withdrawal yes, taken out there, at 11 o'clock. Bookmakers please rule a line of betting announcement to follow the running of the race. Run and jump taken out at 11 o'clock. And now no penalty is coming up to complete the line and they're all in and set to go. Racing at the 1700, Regal Omaru and Candy Vale both began well. Swiss Storm is being ridden from the tail early. No penalty from her outside barrier. Eases back as well. And through the first couple of hundred metres now, Sun Song is driving out looking for the lead and found it by a couple of lengths to Scarlet Scene. Candy Vale is a length and a half away third. She's in a lovely spot, the favourite. Violet Pons is around her. Then came a length further back in the field. Brenda Bella from Regal Omaru. Cytology the outside. One further back is Mary's flag and they're trailed then by Dana Lager. Uh, she's pulling a bit, trailed further back in the field then. At the head of the other horses is Miss Bombay over on the outside and a length further back is uh, just like a dream. Being followed one and a half behind these to Umber and then no penalty and three lengths to Swiss Storm. 900 left to go. Sun Song has the lead, a half length clear. Scarlet Scene is second, a length and a half to Brenda Bella. Candy Vale a length and a half away running fourth over on the inside of Violet Ponds when they go past the 800. Then came Sutology Race the outside of Regal Omaru, followed by Mary's flag. Danilaga well back and snooker as they come around the turn from Miss Bombay. Just like a dream, wide out is taking off and then no penalty. Umber coming wide as they swing for home and Swiss Storm around the bend. Scarlet seen at the 500, straight up level with Sun Song. Candy Vale behind them trying to work clear. Brenda Bella tried to keep her pocketed but couldn't. And the favourite is now in the clear and popped the question and they're followed by Danilaga making ground at the 250 metres now. Here's Candy Vale coming with Run. She raced up and went to the lead from Scarlet Seam, Sun Song, down a and then came Suchology. Scarlet Seam's kicking back. Candy Vale's going home a bit the better, though. Suchology runs on hard, but Candy Vale too good and scored by a length and a quarter. Candy Vale beats Scarlet Seam a head away, Suchology. Then Sun Song, Brenda Bella, and Danilaga. Back behind these to finish them was Regal Omaru, and they were trailed by Umber. Uh, further back, Swiss Storm ran on reasonably only, and then Violet Ponds, no penalty, followed just like a dream. Towards the end is Mary's flag and last to finish is Miss Bombay. No worries really if you back the favourite and you took the short odds, it had the perfect run from a beautiful draw. And while she didn't stretch right away from them, she was always going to win over the last 400. Scarlett's seen yet another second. Remember she ran four in a row in autumn. Look, Peter Merton's really pleased here. He's giving this uh, 
favourite mare if he's a real pet. She went to Adelaide in May as a favourite for the Oaks over there after winning a string of races, including winning here at Flemington over this distance by four lengths. But Peter gave her the perfect ride. Simon said he was up for it. He didn't make a mistake. He had Brinda Bella outside of him in third and fourth place. Brinda Bella just struggling to hold Candy Vale in. And whilst Peter had to ride hard, he was always going to win. Getting home pretty well. Uh, Sotology and also Scarlet Seen hanging on. But uh, it was a good effort by the winner and a very good ride. Yeah, perfect conditions from Barrier 2. Peter didn't panic at this particular point of time. You can see that Brinda Bella's outside him. That's him, the second horse on the running rail, just pushing Brinda Bella out now to come three deep. And then you see Peter just give her a chance to balance up. And uh, Scarlet Seen kicked by a length, but you can see her pin her ears back soon as Pete give her one behind the tail. She's a big girl, she's got great hind quarters on her, she's been running a great some, some class, classy conveyors. She dropped considerably in class today and she needed a kill. I was talking to Bruce just prior to the race. She needed to come here today and against mares, against her own age and sex and um, have a nice little win and a victory in a hundred thousand dollar race. You can see the connection is very happy. Now here's Peter Mertens just letting everybody know he's had a pretty rough spring but he can still do the job. Well, I reckon Pete's going to be wrapped in that. As Simon suggests, uh, this was a big day for him, John, winning today. Yeah, yes, Bruce, and uh, you should be out here because uh, Peter just called her. Uh, well, what'd you call her? Mark two. Mark two. Mark two. Pete, she, uh, she put you into the box seat straight away, but what a beautiful ride by Peter Merton. Thanks, Leslie, thanks. Well, she you know, made it easy. She's a good horse. In that field, she just made it my job easy, you know. Over the 1700, she seemed to relax just off the speed, and when you asked her to go, you had to push your way out. I did. I had to sort of move Brinda Bella a little just to get a clear run. She was a little bit worried about her being in front. Just to, she's a big stride mare that you know takes a bit of unwinding. So once you got in the clear on you, you're not going to beat her. And, and you know, Pete, the, the public have just showed the confidence in you. They had her a short price favourite, and you've done the, you've returned them the favour. They told me it was all your money. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations, mate, and. Uh, Hopefully we can interview you later in the day. That'd be great, wouldn't it, mate? Yep, All congratulations, right. Pete. On there, <laughs> Good on you, mate. Thanks, Peter Merton's the winning rider there, and here is the winning trainer, Pat Carey. Well, Pat, finally she had some luck. Yeah, finally. Um, Pete gave her a really great ride, and... Uh, you know, the pace was nice and got out at the right time and uh, found the line well. And the good thing was with that gate, you could really make your own luck. That's right. We're pretty pretty happy with the draw. <laughs> she was skinny odds, though, wasn't she? Well, I mean, she uh, she was going to go around probably third favourite and sat there in a Group 1 mares race, and yeah. here she is. Unfortunately, she didn't get a run, and here she is in a 1,700-metre mares race. Uh, probably warranted being short. That short, I don't know. Two more days of the carnival, Paddy. Would you back her up? I doubt it. Um, she's a lightly raced mare, and uh, you know there's an autumn to, there's an autumn ahead of her, and uh, there's plenty of time to make a uh, career for her. Congratulations! Celebrate the win. Cheers. Thanks very much. Celebrate the will. Peter Merton's later today riding Envoy. He had his first ride in the Melbourne Cup back in 1994. So the short price favourite of the day and possibly of the carnival at odds on Candy Vale winning the Big Pond 1700 from Scarlet Scene and Sutology.